Let's review the new Mac Studio in both the M1 Max and M1 Ultra flavors. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It's Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. So Apple did it. Apple just released the Mac Studio and it's an impressive piece of kit. It comes in two different versions, one with the M1 Max processor and one with the M1 Ultra, which is the fourth chip in the M1 lineup. It's basically two M1 Max processors fused together. There's a lot to touch on in this review, so this is how it's gonna shake out and you can navigate using the chapter marker down below. First, I'm gonna go through the different configurations and the ports and setup of these two machines, including touching on whether or not those SSDs are upgradable. Stay tuned, you'll, you'll wanna hear what I have to say. After that, I'm gonna go through some benchmarks comparing the M1 Max and M1 Ultra versions to one another and some benchmarks to the Mac Pro. Then finally, I'm gonna round this out talking about day-to-day -day performance, usability, and who this machine is meant for. Let's go ahead and jump into this thing. The Mac Studio is a roughly seven by seven cube with rounded off corners, and it basically looks like a Mac Mini took too many protein shakes. It looks like more or less three of them stacked on top of one another. As I mentioned, the Mac Studio comes in two different versions. From the outside, they're largely indiscernible from one another, but there are some physical changes that you can be aware of, and it's pretty easy to tell one from the other as soon as you pick them up. The Mac Studio with the M1 Max processor comes in at just under six pounds, though the one with the M1 Ultra weighs in at a weighty eight pounds. It's roughly two pounds heavier thanks to a different heatsink on the inside. See, Apple is using an aluminum heatsink in the M1 Max version, but the M1 Ultra version opted for a copper one, which weighs much more and costs much more than the aluminum one in the M1 Max version. The other physical change between these two devices is on the front. Both models have an SDXE UHS-2 card reader, so slide your SD cards in and read them without having to turn the machine around. Additionally, there are two Type-C ports, but those ports differ. On the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio, those are USB-C ports, and they're up to 10 gigabits per second of data. Whereas on the M1 Ultra version, those are two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports. On the back, everything's the same. You have a quartet of Thunderbolt 4 ports, followed by an Ethernet port. You have your power port there in the middle, the Mickey Mouse connector. Then you have two USB-A ports, an HDMI port, and a headphone jack. No, Apple still didn't opt for the faster HDMI 2.1. It's still an HDMI 2.0 port. When choosing your Mac Studio, you have a few options. First, you have to choose between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra version of the machine. If you go with the M1 Max version, you can choose a 24 or 32 core GPU, which also comes with a 16 core neural engine. It does start off with 32 gigs of RAM, but you can upgrade it to 64. You can get up to eight terabytes of internal storage, though it starts off at 512 gigs. On the M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio, you immediately get a 20 core CPU because it's double the 10 core M1 Max, then you can choose between a 48 or a 64 core GPU. Then it comes with a 32 core neural engine by default. And you can choose again up to eight terabytes of internal storage, but you can go now from 64 or 128 gigs of RAM. Double what we saw in the M1 Max. Let me be very clear. No matter what other videos on YouTube claim to say, the Mac Studio cannot be upgraded after you purchase it. There may be a second internal slot for a second SSD, but you will never be able to use it. We reached out and asked Apple about this, and an employee inside of the Apple's corporate structure who is unauthorized to speak for the company told us what that slot is for. It's for Apple's own supply chain and repairability processes. It reduces the number of motherboards that Apple needs to create, streamlining the manufacturing process. Another of Apple Insider sources within Apple told us that Apple has no plans to release a user upgraded SSD module for the Mac Studio. And I know what some of you are thinking out there. 
maybe a third party will create a new SSD that you can simply slot in there yourself, even if Apple doesn't fully support it. But again, that's just not going to happen. Apple is using a new type of SSD inside of the Mac Studio, one without a controller like many other on the markets do. So instead, it's just the flash storage itself and the controllers are housed inside of the Mac Studio. So these are a new SSD that don't exist elsewhere on the market that you can just go and buy and slot into the Mac Studio. And should a third party create them, you couldn't just stick them in and make them work anyway. A repair technician has to use a serialization tool that'll link that SSD to the Mac Studio. And that's something that you're just not gonna do inside of your home. Again, I'll say it very clearly and in no uncertain terms, the Mac Studio is not upgradable. You will not be able to upgrade the SSD. Now let's move ahead and talk about some benchmarks on the new Mac Studio. In my testing, I used two base machines, a base M1 Max and a base M1 Ultra Mac Studio. I ran through eight benchmarks, including multiple video export tests inside of Final Cut Pro. We're gonna start off with speedometer, speedometer, whatever you wanna call it, but this is a browser benchmark that tests the responsiveness of web applications. In my testing, I got 293 runs per minute on the M1 Max and a very similar 292 run per minute on that M1 Ultra. Really no difference between these two chips in terms of this web app performance. In Geekbench 5 for the single core score, we expected these to be pretty much the same and that's what we got. A 1798 for the M1 Max and a 1786 on that Ultra, just within the margin of error. For the Geekbench 5 multi-core though, we saw that big difference between the 10 and 20 core CPUs. We got a 12.822 on the M1 Max and a 23.778 on the M1 Ultra. For Cinebench, which also is testing that CPU, we got a 15.35 and a 15.35 on the single core. And for the multi-core, again, basically double a 12.389 and a 24.210 on that Cinebench multi-core test. Moving to Affinity Photo, this is another benchmark that measures vector performance for the CPU and raster performance for both the CPU and GPU. Mainly we're looking at the multi-core or the combined totals for the GPU as well as the CPU. So in the CPU combined test, we got a 947 score for the M1 Max and about a double 1879 for the M1 Ultra. You can see how it's basically double the performance of that M1 Max. And if we look at the Affinity Photo combined multi-score total for the GPU, we're getting a 22, 537, and a 33, That's the difference between those two internal GPUs. In this case, we're going from a 24 core for the M1 Max and a 48 core for the M1 Ultra. Continuing to look at the graphics, we have the Geekbench Compute graphics under Metal, which is getting us a 60,629 for that M1 Max, compared to a 91,938 for the M1 Ultra. It's neat that we saw very similar gains, the same percentage on that Affinity GPU test as well as the Geekbench graphics GPU test. If we continue looking at graphics with the Unigen Heaven benchmark, this is an older application and it does run under Rosetta, so it isn't native to the machine, but it still gives you an idea when running under Rosetta, how much better the M1 Ultra can do with these graphics. So the benchmark ran at an average rate of 94 frames per second on the M1 Max and an average rate of 102 frames per second on the M1 Ultra. The scores weren't too far apart with the M1 Max scoring a 2371 and the M1 Ultra scoring a 2584. If you look at the maximum frames per second on each of them, they were both just around 187. Now those are all benchmarks, but what does that actually mean in terms of a real world application? In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and export a video inside of Final Cut. So I have a 4K video, 30 frames per second, that is an hour long, and I exported it on both machines just to 4K. And it took 18 minutes and 13 seconds on the M1 Max from Final Cut, and the M1 Ultra took a very similar 18 minutes and 22. Basically, again, within that margin of error. There wasn't much of a difference in that long file. Now that first export was just the Apple compatible 4K video file. So if I exported a full file from Final Cut Pro with the file being in ProRes, a 16 minute video took a minute and 14 seconds on the M1 Ultra, which definitely was better than the minute and 30 seconds on the M1 Max, 
when you extrapolate that out to a much longer video or more complicated video, you can see how the M1 Ultra and its multiple video encode and decode engine is able to help out on those high-end video exports, let alone if you're looking at an 8K file or something even more complicated. Lastly, I want to round this out with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. I got a 4629 megabits per second write and a 5180 on the read. But on the M1 Ultra, I got a 5163 write and a 5226 read. The difference here being is the M1 Ultra has the larger SSD on the inside as well. So as the size gets up there, it is a faster SSD module than the smaller sizes. So keep that in mind when ordering. One of the questions that I got a lot with the original uh, hands-on and benchmarking video of the M1 Max and M1 Ultra versions of the Mac Studio was how much noise these guys created. And we went and tested that for this review. The M1 Max Mac Studio hit around 37 decibels idle and 41 under load. The M1 Ultra Mac Studio hit 39 while idle and 42 under load. That was taken using an audio meter roughly about three feet away from the machine. So is 42 dBA loud? Is that something to be concerned about? Heck nah. These things are a little louder than existing Apple Silicon machines just because they're higher output devices, but they are not nearly loud as, as loud as uh, the Intel machines that preceded them. So no, 42 under load is not bad for these things at all. It is a little disappointing that there is some sound coming out when they're idle, like an M1 Mac Mini, it can be pretty much silent when it's sitting idle. So that is a downside, but I do not think it is a big one. Also, there may be times when the M1 Ultra version of the Mac Studio is quieter than the M1 Max version. I've heard this a little bit on Twitter and I haven't completely recreated it while they're sitting side by side, but it's theoretically possible that because this is a higher output processor, it could be doing things without that fan pumping up that the M1 Max would have to pump up a little bit. But in terms of max volume on both of them, this, the M1 Ultra version, was just a little louder than the M1 Max version. I've seen a lot of comparisons saying that people with $28,000 Mac Pros may want to swap it out for a four or $5,000 Mac Studio, but that's really not reasonable. The $28,000 Mac Pro is still a beast of a machine and it does outperform, even if just by a little, the Mac Studio. Plus the Mac Pro has many other benefits, including multiple PCIe slots on the inside and a higher memory limit. If you have a $28,000 Mac Pro that you've already bought, it's probably worth hanging onto rather than switching to the Mac Studio. What's a more realistic comparison is whether or not you should swap out a $6,000 Mac Pro for a four or $5,000 Mac Studio. That is a much more fair comparison. So let's go ahead and look at some of those benchmarks. Across multiple CPU benchmarks, you'll see the same story when you put the M1 Ultra against the eight core Intel Xeon and the base model Mac Pro. Geekbench 5 illustrates this quite well with its single core test putting the M1 Ultra at 1786 points versus the 1016 the Mac Pro musters. It's the same story for the multi-core with the M1 Ultra's 23778, almost three times that of the Mac Pro's 8019. So multiple on Apple Insiders teams have been using the Mac Studio for several days now. And overall, this is an impressive machine. And even if it's not for you, you should be excited about what the future holds. Once Apple has unshackled itself from Intel, it was able to create this monster of a machine at a lower price point than what its Intel alternatives would be. This thing has been incredible, and there's a lot of use cases for it that many people don't even think about. We've talked to roadies and crews that are really excited about replacing giant monster rigs with these compact Mac Studios instead of Mac Pros or other tower PCs. There are important government options and other server options where this is a much better thing to mount and store and cool than a Mac Pro, and it uses a lot less power. Plus there's the modular aspect when we compare it to a 27 inch iMac. If you pick up a 27 inch iMac, you're stuck with exactly what Apple provided. You're stuck with that display. You're stuck with an all-in-one design. It's not transportable. You can't really, I mean, you can swap out your keyboard and mouse, but it comes with it. You don't have a choice in what you use there. So with the Mac Studio, you have a lot more options. You can choose your own display. Is it vertical? Is it horizontal? What reference modes does it support? Do you want to pick up a different keyboard and mouse trackpad? That's your obligation and your choice to do so. And on the back, you have many more ports than the Mac uh, iMac, 27 inch iMac, offer to you, including that blazing fast Ethernet, up to six Thunderbolt 4 ports 
and the USB-A HDMI. There's a lot here to choose from. So it lets you create your own system. There are still people who want a 27 inch iMac. There's still people who are waiting for that really high end Apple Silicon Mac Pro. But right now, Apple has created more machines that target more users than ever. The Mac Studio, it's not for everybody, but there are a lot of users that are going to love this machine and its performance speaks for itself. If you wanna grab the Mac Studio in either the M1 Max or M1 Ultra versions, you can find the links for them down below in the description. We started collecting the best deals that have already started trickling out. Let me know what you think in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU and stay tuned. Got more videos coming your way.